Hello my soccer universe. Well, this area video was a long time in the making now that I'm doing two rounds at once. Um, yeah, it's a better way for me to do it. I actually wanted to do it before the Premier League video, but then I messed up a little bit and I said, okay, I will do it last. And also I have a little bit more time because this will post on Saturday morning, well in time before the next Serie A games are going. I also had a hard time picking the jersey. Um, I could have gone with Atalanta, I could have gone with Inter, I could have gone with Juve. I decided on Juve because I think they were the most convincing over this past week. And Juve looks like in the, yes, considering the opposition, as we will see, they didn't play all those great uh, those great opponents. But Juve look a little bit like Juve, undeniable. And let's start right off with Juve. Uh, on Friday, <laughs> that's more than a week ago, they beat Lecce rather comfortably 4-0. Uh, but the result was much, much uh, more lopsided than the game was because it was nil-nil at the half with, uh, I think, Ronaldo even missing a uh, pretty big chance. It needed Dybala to find the breakthrough. Then there was a penalty that Ronaldo converted and then it was all going one way. Iguain back on the scoring sheet and then also De Ligt uh, pulled, pulls one in. Of course, it was largely helped by uh, Lecce in the 32nd getting a red card. Um, not an ideal situation. It's nil-nil. You have a red card. I think it was a, a, a it could have been given a penalty and was given a free flick or something like that. Has been a long time. Uh, but yeah, I think this was largely responsible because uh, Juve had some trouble at the beginning. Uh, Brescia again or 2 2 didn't see much of that. Cagliari gets a win over Torino uh, in a game that I was very much, yeah, this could be a great game, but. Um, it was 3-0 right after the half and Nainggolan in the 46 made it 3-0. Um, then Torino pulled two back and you thought, oh, this is a game. Bremer and Belotti in the 60th and 65th and then uh, they give a penalty in the 68th and that was that. There was nothing more coming and Kaleri gets off the Schneider. I think they had not been winning for a long time. They finally get their first win under Walter Zenga. I have to see, say, when I was told this coach is Walter Zenga, it took me a while because I still have him from the early 90s in my head. Yes, if he takes the glasses off, I can see Zenga. Other than that, not so much. Everyone was looking for Lazio against Fiorentina because we want to keep the title race going and Lazio is our only chance. And I have to say I have some trouble because Lazio is not one of my fav favorite teams, but I really would love to see them win this title. And they had their trouble and Ribéry scored a wonderful goal. And I have to say many great goals, like in Spain, many great goals have been scored uh, in Serie A uh, in this week. Then the Lazio gets a very, very, very soft penalty. Uh, probably one that should never have been given in the second half. Immobile scores, keeping up his wonderful scoring streak, and then very late Luis Alberto finds the breakthrough, giving Lazio a rather labored victory. And then my uh, attention turned to Milan Roma, my two favorite Italian teams. Although my favoritism in this one is clear. I'm a Milan fan first and foremost. Um, but you know, I have a very, very soft spot for Roma. It was also a game of some of the best jerseys uh, this season in Serie A with the thin striped red and black Milan jersey, which would I have shot this video uh, at the beginning of the week, I probably would have worn that one. Milan, you probably know, Milan didn't live up uh, to the billing uh, in midweek against the uh, Navy Roma jersey, which uh, Unfortunately, I cannot find at the moment to buy because I really would like to have the same thing with the weight jersey. I wanted to have this jersey, I cannot find it. For uh, you know, I don't want to play full pay full price, but I'm close to if I find find it that I, I will buy it even for a full price. I'm a little bit gutted by that because that away jersey more than the uh, na native one, I really would have loved to have anyway. The game, actually, I would say the first 30 minutes belonged to Roma without having too many chances, but Milan barely could get out of their own half. And I thought, oh yeah, uh, Milan started off strongly and now you're going not, not as, as I like it. But towards the end of the first half, I have, have to say, Milan actually got a little bit in, into the game and they actually could string a few attacks together where they actually then could stay in the opposing half. 
And fortunately the game continued that way with Roma barely hanging on. I have to say I was really disappointed of how Roma played in the second half because it was all Milan then. Uh, it just, they, how to say, they had their chances but barely could uh, convert and the chances that they created were not all, all the great but um, symptomatic was the 1-0 through Rebic which was really 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 hard work. I mean the cross in then um, it is bounced, uh, Cassie makes an artistic move, it hits the post and it falls back to Rebic who puts it in. I think there was a bar in there, I mean it was really a labored goal um, that you just need, need, need to get in there. And that basically was the game, Roma maybe uh, had a shot on goal or something like that, but when a penalty was given and rightful so, Cialanoglu converted that, that one. Cialanoglu actually up until that, that point I have, have to say was the star for me for since the restart. He really played well for Milan, which is not something I see much from Cialanoglu. And it ends 2-0 for Milan. Huge win for the European ambitions because you can claw yourself back into Europa League conversation which we never thought would happen. Then there were a bunch of games late uh, on Sunday, which I actually find very reasonable to do. Uh, it's just which ones do we, do, do, do we pick? Uh, in my case, I didn't pick either one because I think I was watching something completely differently. Uh, don't remember now what it was. Uh, probably some Germany stuff or whatever. Nah, I was watching Lusk. Yes, that's what was it. I was watching Lusk. Yeah, uh, you will get the Bundesliga and Austrian and German Bundesliga and Cup Final I make um, Tuesday morning. You should have that one. Anyway, of those games that were on Sunday, I think Udine Atalanta, that, that was probably a probably crazy game because I uh, remember, I think Atalanta rolled over Udine 7 0 7 1. And it seemed to be going that way because Zapata very early gets a goal for Atalanta, but Kevin Lasagna, I'm getting hungry again. Uh, makes it uh, equal as in the third, third, first. It was a much more even game. However, Atalanta clearly in the second half took the game over, um, created chances and actually converted through Luis Muriel in the 71st and in the 79th. He is a super sub. I mean, the offensive prowess of Atalanta is amazing. Uh, and I really love their style of play. Yes, we're gonna leak goals, but we're gonna score more, more than you. This is an absolute... At Atalanta is really well worth watching, even against smaller op opponents. And yes, they were leaking another goal, it was only 3-2, although the game was much, much more um, to going towards Atalanta. Sassuolo Hellas Verona was also uh, another one of those. Verona, probably the favorites, but Sassuolo oh, come, come off with 3-3 against Inter. Uh, but you didn't know, Ver Verona is really playing a good goal season, uh, also challenging for Europe. Lazovic gets uh, a goal for Verona, but the Boga immediately uh, equalizes. And then um, Verona gets very comfortable leads. The Pinsk in the 57th uh, and Pessina in the 68th make it 3-1. And you think, yeah, three points to Verona. No, Boga uh, makes it tight. And then in stoppage time, Rogerio makes uh, the, the equalizer absolutely uh crazy game again and Sassuolo 3-3, two 3-3s in a row. Serie A is a high scoring league. Uh, Bologna gets a win at Sampdoria, Napoli 3-1 over Spal, which uh, kind of put them also in good uh, contention. And then Parma Inter was also one of those uh, games where Parma had Inter in the bag for almost time. Chavini are in the 15th and they really, really were uh, in very, in many ways uh, the better team Inter not really showing up and it took a while for Inter to get in there. And yes, they were again held by a red card. De Vrij equal as in the 84th and the 85th. Kuczka right after, after the goal is uh, sent off on sportsman like car conduct. I think he was yapping at the ref and that unsettled Parma enough so that Bastonic in the 87th can get a win for Inter which is one of those wins if you want to stay in a title race and Inter barely is hanging, hanging on as we will see this was exactly what you needed and if we look at the table uh, now after this round this is not the current, uh, current table we'll get to that one too uh, we see that I 
at least uh, the Milan fan, of course, will will say that the big winner uh, was kind of Milan because you had uh, a Roma losing. You get within touching distance of Napoli. Um, Hellas is dropping points. Parma is not winning, so it was really going well for Juve. Also, Juve and Lazio continue the title race. They're still four points, but remember, Lazio has beaten Juve twice already, and they're still playing Turin. So um, one point, and I have a feeling that. Juve has a tough schedule ahead, uh, so it's not all roses going, go, going, going, going there. So um, looking all tight on top, Inter, as I said, barely hang, hangs in there. Atalanta, um, yeah, bad start, start to the season. Otherwise, we could talk uh, them uh, maybe challenging as well at the moment. And it was a big uh, race for at least the Europa League spots. I, on the bottom, yes, Geno and Sampdoria were leapfrogging, but uh, it stayed tight there too. So let's move on to the midweek. And I was so hoping that um, we get more from uh, Milan, but it was not to be. But uh, let's talk first, for, for first about the other teams. Torino Lazio. I saw it uh, roughly from the 15th minute on a time where Belotti already had converted the penalty for Torino. And I have to say, uh, Lazio took a long while to move into the game, but eventually they did. And uh, with um, Immobile wasting many chances. I think Lazio had many uh, shots, but uh, not, not, not many targets. Right after the half, a nice pass of Luis Alberto, and Immobile takes a shot that finds the back of the net. Lazio is back in the game. They needed this early goal. Um, and Lazio was pressing without having great chances. I never, I, it, it didn't, the uh, goal necessarily, didn't necessarily seem to be on their way, but there was more pressure on Torino. Torino uh, was really hanging hang back. And then a shot by Parolo uh, kind of gets a wicket deflection. And Lazio again turns a game. Puts a little bit of pressure on Juventus, um, who look at Genoa. And yeah, it's nil-nil for a long, long time. You have a little bit more, more position, but again, in the second half, three other worldly goals. I mean, uh, other worldly Three Absolutely great goals. I mean, this was, was was a game of goal highlights. Dybala's solo to get to make it 1-0 in the 50th. Ronaldo's wonderful shot in the 56th makes it 2-0. And then probably an even better shot by Costa. I think it was really going uh, one-upmanship in, in, in a way. Of course, Ronaldo will tell you that he scored the best goal. But, you know, look, look at them and, and decide for yourself. All three worldies, to be honest. Uh, and set Juve on the path, Pinamonte pulls one back in the 76th, but the result was never really in doubt. Uh, Bologna Calori won one, then Inter really boosts their goal difference and actually discovered that you can also play with Alexis Sanchez, who sets up the goal by Ashley Young and then converts a penalty to make it 2-0 uh, in the 20th, Ambrosio makes it 3-0. The other games, another assist by Sanchez, Gagliardini, uh, in the 59th, and then Eriksen and Kandreva, so six different goal scorers, which is kind of impressive. Unfortunately, Brescia is not the big of all opposition, but you gotta beat them uh, that convincingly, and Inter has rarely done that. Fiorentina was looking like they wanted to bounce back from their, you know, rather undeserved loss at Lazio against the Sassuolo team that we already say was a little bit um, flying. And yeah, once De Frel, uh, a penalty gave up, I think um, uh, Castrovilli gave up the penalty. Um, and from that moment on, um, De Frel scores another one, third, third, fifth, and then he uh, se sets up the goal by Mert Müldier in the 61st. And Fiorentina can only put one back to Cutrone. Rather disappointing uh, for Fiorentina fans. They are always looking now for the next season. I think Fiorentina has some potential. Um, they just need to use it in a way. Uh, Lecce Sampdoria won to Spal Milan. Oh, I was looking forward to it. I have this uh, thinking that Lusk and Milan cannot win on the same day. Lusk lost not twice on the same day that Milan was playing. Milan wins against Roma. Lusk had lost earlier, so I was thinking, yeah, Spal Milan. Milan should win this. And then very early on, uh, Milan, I think they give up a penalty. Uh, and it is 1-0 for Lecce rather early on. But I was not nervous yet. 
No, it was not. A, no, it was not the penalty. It was um, Valotti a goal. Uh, took a wicked deflection. Not good defending. Not good defending. Absolutely. So um, one nil for Spal Milan. Though coming a little bit in here, yeah, because Diego had to uh, go out. Salamakers comes in. Milan controlling kind of the game, but Spal being nasty. And then Flockery with another wonderful goal. Uh, a ball comes out and he just one times it and whoops into the net. 2 0. And then I got nervous. <laughs> but at 1 0, I thought Milan can turn this around. I trust him. Milan then had a goal disallowed by, for a marginal offside. Uh, through Charles Nogle, which I really would have liked to have stood because I think then Milan would have a good chance of winning it. Uh, when Alessandro fouled um, Theo Hernandez, um, he got initially a yellow card, a low look at it in VAR, and it was changed to a red card. I have to say, uh, yes, it was a dark yellow. I think I could have lived with a yellow there. But when you see how he then moves the foot against the shin, not sure how much intended it was or, or, or whatever. I can see why a red car comes given, but even me as a Milan fan, I thought it was maybe a little bit a harsh decision, although it was a pretty uh, rough, the rough tackle. But that gave me hope again. I think I would not have watched the game if I can't continue to watch the game if there was this red card. Uh, and Milan then um, put Spal on the back foot. But could not find any, any shots or and hardly any shots on goals. I think it was uh, at one point, I think they had 29 shots on uh, shots, uh, 29 shots and only four went on goal. I mean, uh, it then increased a little bit um, towards the end of, of, of the game. Um, Rebic came off, uh, Ibrahimovic came on, and it, it's on. it was Leao came on. For Calabria, there was a lot of shuffling around. It was all going, uh, you, we gotta move forward. We will put uh, goals past Spal. It didn't look convincing though, uh, and it didn't have the great chances. Leao in the 79th puts one in, and I was really hoping, yeah, maybe we can get something. But it took an own goal in stoppage time. Yes, Milan was at times a little bit unlucky. But on the other side, you also have to say that... Um, Spal probably would have deserved for their fight um, a, a win, at least a point out of it. Another rather contentious affair was Hellas against Parma. Uh, I had this on the sex screen, but I didn't follow it too closely, to be honest. Uh, Parma took a lead in the first half and just before halftime, equalized, uh, Verona could equalize uh, through a penalty. Then Verona takes lead in 54th that Galliolo uh, equalizes. And then in the 81st, uh, Pessina gets the win for um, Ver Verona. It was a really tight contest. It was a vital win for them. Uh, the big game was surely uh, Atalanta against Napoli yesterday evening. Um, first half, I have to say, was rather dull. I think the highlight was, and it was a low light, um, uh, when the goalie of Napoli, uh, Ospina, got hit on the head and head, had to be taken off. And I think that broke Napoli because up until that point, I think Napoli was well in the game. It was not the greatest of games, but because Napoli um, could hold Atalanta at bay and was actually working quite well, um, uh, scoring themselves. But I think that broke. And then right after the half, Atalanta pounces on, on that. Napoli twice cannot clear pro properly. Then uh, Gomez assist uh, through Pasalic, uh, makes it 1-0 in the 47th and the 55th. Um, similar story. Uh, they cannot clear the ball. You thought they have it. And then Atalanta uh, launches another attack. Toloi with a cross in that goal since in the 55th uh, converts. And then Atalanta was cruising at that point. And I didn't see the highlights, but Roma loses 2-0 at home to Udine. So a horrible week, horrible, horrible week uh, for Roma. Which basically means with all these results, we had Roma losing, we had Napoli losing, we had Milan not winning, although Milan was never really in. It looks rather safe who the top four will be. Will be Juve, Lazio, Inter and Atalanta. Those four will play next year in the Champions League. Uh, unless there's a monumental collapse, but I really cannot see that ha happening. We have a marginal title race between Juve and Lazio, which hopefully stays on. Um, there's still a lot of games to be played. Nine games, so a lot of stuff can happen. The challenge for the Europa League spots, yes, uh, if Milan would have won, they would really, really look good, but uh, now Hellas can get a little bit closer. 
uh, Parma and Cagliari uh, maybe not so much and if you look at the bottom it also the bottom three looks at the uh, again Genoese teams pick up quite a few points well let me know what you thought about the games in the, in the, in the midweek as I said you will look strong but uh, they have now a Turin derby car coming up Lazio has to play against Milan um, will be interesting you will also have to play Milan rather soon I don't like the schedule for Milan going come conquer coming up anyway give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video drop a comment below uh, with your thoughts on happenings in Serie A and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!